Hi, I'm Jessica Russo Cher, and here I'm going to teach you how to go through and gel plate image transfer step by step. First, I use Amsterdam acrylic paint. Any good quality acrylic paint will do. I roll it out on a scrap laser print just to, you know, be slightly more sustainable. You want to make sure this layer is super thin. Remove all hair from it because, you know, it'll show up in your print. I have several videos on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, and Instagram that explains all about how I prep my images, my laser prints before I do this process. You want to do this very quickly. I use a double print, CMYK, and sometimes half tone in order to get all the gradients to appear. And the way this works is that the paint gets sucked up into the printer paper in the places that doesn't have toner and it stays in on the gel plate in all the other places. It's really quite fascinating. And yeah, so it's because I used half tone, I have a lot of gradients, which is really nice. Once that's fully dry, I go in and I start layering in my reverse painting. This part is really important to think about what colors you want to see first. So consider the color schemes that you're working with. Think about how they blend together. I like to do mine on plexiglass because I can flip it over and check on it every so often. It just really sticks to the plexiglass like glue. I tend to focus on the highlights first and then move on to the mid-tones and darker tones. The very final layer that you put on can be gel medium if you don't want a specific color to come through or it can be a color if you want that little pop to come through. I decided to use a golden titanium white to cover the background because I wanted a little bit more opacity to my acrylic colors and even though it's going on white paper I just feel like this adds a little bit more. I use Bristol and you can see the details in the image of what type of Bristol I use. I like Bristol the best because it's strong and smooth. I do set it underneath a fair amount of books. I let it dry until it's fully dry. It can be 10 minutes, it can be three hours, who knows. I then try to peel it off and if it tears, I just lay it back down and let it sit for a little while and hope for the best. Because you know, sometimes it's just slightly unpredictable. If anything stays on the plate, you could always tap. You could always touch it up afterwards with a little bit of acrylic paint or a pen or a marker. I have a longer like half hour long tutorial on all the ins and outs of jelly plate printing, but I wanted to show you one image straight from beginning to end, and this is how I do it. Mm -hmm. 